I'm gonna show you a lyric writing technique in this video that is used by lots of professional songwriters and certainly some of the songwriters whose lyrics I adore and hopefully I can demonstrate some of those to you today as well. I love this lyric writing technique because every time I run this exercise in my college and university classes, and I've taught at the Berklee College of Music in Boston, and I've taught for Berklee online for almost 10 years. The people in my classes write some of the best stuff they've ever written. And my hope is that by showing it to you, you are able to use it to generate some really interesting lyrics that resonate with your listeners, but do it in a not obvious or cliched way. So let's dive in. This technique is called sonic targeting and it's a rhyme based process and it really comes to life when you actually start the lyric writing process with a title or a really interesting line that is so compelling to you that you know you will want to repeat it in at least one or two other sections of your song. So let's start with a title and to demonstrate this technique I've come up with the title Dancing with Fire in the Dark. Now this is inherently interesting to me, at least, even though I don't necessarily know what it means yet. But one of the things that's interesting about it is that it could mean lots of things. And the lovely thing about sonic targeting, which is the technique we're going to talk about in this video, is that it works as a way to explore meaning when you don't know what something means. It also works when you do have a specific idea of what a song will be about once you've got that title. So sonic targeting is a rhyme based technique and in the traditional habitual sort of unthinking way to approach rhyming this line, even if we're starting with a title, the default way to do this would be to focus on the last word of the line, which in dancing with fire in the dark is the word dark. So the way in this default mode that you might go about that is to set up that line, set up the rhyme for that line with words like spark, mark, hard, part, something like that, which might give you a section of lyric like this. You light me up when I least expect it, when the night gets cold and hard. You're the fuse to every spark. We're dancing, dancing with fire in the dark. So that lyric that has been driven by setting up the rhyme resolution, it's logical and the lyric is reasonably evocative. I could definitely work with that lyric, but there is a more interesting way that will make your lyrics feel so much less obvious and yet still deliver the same feeling of resolution and delivery of your main idea. So this is how sonic targeting works. Instead of targeting, the word dark, which is to say the last word in the line, what we're going to do is target one of the other strong vowel sounds in your title. So for me, dancing with fire in the dark, the other strong syllables there are dance or fire. And because in the lyric that I've mocked up here, I've already kind of targeted the I sound with light and night, I'm gonna instead focus on targeting the vowel sound in the word dance. And what I'm immediately gonna do is actually write up a section here that is using end line rhymes that rhyme not with dark, but with dance. So let me come up with a little melody <laughs> to this lyric so that I can express it to you. And then I'm gonna break down step by step for you how I went about constructing this lyric so that you can do it too. me up when I least expect and we are shadow puppets hand in hand in the night you're my only candle and we're dancing dancing with fire in the dark as you can hear in that little example Everything comes together, but in a totally unexpected way. And herein lies one of the core truths of great songwriting. When you as a songwriter can deliver the comfort of familiarity, which often we achieve through setting up some kind of expectation with rhyme in this case, but you also give your listeners the delight 
of surprise. In this case, by resolving that pattern in an unexpected way, the experience for a listener is unbeatable. It feels something like magic for a listener, but more importantly, it's that slight angularity, it's that element of surprise that actually triggers the attention of your listener. And when they're leaning in like that and paying more attention, there is more connection between you as the writer and the listener of your songs. And that's really what we're looking for as songwriters, right? We're looking for that moment of connection, that moment of communion. We're really looking Looking to make a difference in the heart and mind of our listeners. Let's take a look at sonic targeting in action inside an incredible song by an amazing songwriter and lyricist, Bruno Major. So inside the Bruno Major song, In Places We Won't Walk, he uses sonic targeting as one of the main strategies for setting up and delivering the title of this song in places we won't walk. So let me demonstrate to you how this works inside this song by playing the first verse for you. Sunlight dances off the leaves, birds of red color the trees, flowers filled with buzzing bees in places we won't walk. If we look at the title line of this song, in places we won't walk, the typical way of setting up the rhyme resolution of a line like that is to focus on the word walk. Of course, it's the last word of the line, but there are other sounds inside this title line that Bruno Major is very, very deliberately targeting with the rhyme scheme. And it gives us that sense of resolution but in a totally unexpected way. And if you think that that's just a coincidence in this song, all we need to do is actually look at the chorus and we can see it happen again in the main central section of this song. So let's take a listen. Children cry and laugh and play. Slowly hair will turn to gray. We will smile to end each day in places. We won't walk. To summarize this technique as a step-by-step -step process, here is what I recommend. Step one, decide on an interesting title or line that might stand repeating throughout your song. Aim for six to eight words with at least three strong vowel sounds inside the line. And it's also really important that those vowel sounds are different. If your line is something like the lights of the night are bright, well, it's all the same vowel sound. It's not gonna have the same effect. We need a mix of vowel sounds in that line to achieve sonic targeting in this way. Step two is to pick one of these other sounds. So the idea is to pick something that's not the last word of your line. Once you've picked one of those words, step three is to generate as long of a list as you can as words that rhyme with it. Feel free to use online rhyming dictionaries like rhymezone.com or B Rhymes or a physical rhyming dictionary like the Clement Wood and make sure to include some slant rhymes. So slant rhymes means we don't just want to rhyme the word night with light, sight, fight, etc. We can also rhyme it with words like time, high, style. Rhyme is much more driven and much more interesting when we're connecting the vowel sound. So we want our rhyme list in this step to include a variety of different rhyme types and options. Step four is to write a four to six line section that ends with your title line and where at least one or two of the other lines in the section rhymes with that word that you are sonic targeting in this section. So the technique of sonic targeting is one that relies on actually starting with a title, which is almost like reverse engineering the lyrics by starting with the central idea rather than the first idea and actually almost working backwards from that centerpiece of the song. And if you're interested to explore how another really famous and exquisite songwriter uses a similar reverse engineering process, make sure to check out the video right here. Happy writing guys. I'll see you next time.